Hello and welcome back to the DIY hosting of an email server video series. In this video, the eighth bonus video in the series, we continue our work on improving our email server by going back through our setup and checking that the changes we've made to enable multiple domains on our email server still meet the required standards for the emails to go into the recipient's inboxes and not necessarily their spam boxes. Now I say necessarily because even if you have the perfect setup, your emails may still on occasions end up in spam boxes. This unfortunately is out of our control and a side effect of the fact that most of the emails flying around the internet are indeed spam. And email servers and clients do tend to err on the side of caution with new email servers. So all we can do is make sure our outgoing emails meet all of the commonly expected standards and our domain is not on any major blacklisting sites. So let's get cracking and walk over some old ground. But before I do, you know the score, just a quick reminder that I have a Patreon account. And if you'd like to receive support from me directly, um, access videos weeks, if not months early, uh, or just contribute to my work, please do check out my account. Right, so the process of going back over our setup is split into two shorter parts rather than having one very long video. We'll first check the DNS settings are correct for our new additional domain to hopefully remove any ambiguity, confusion or concern you may have about the correct DNS settings you need for each new domain. We'll then cover checking we are using a fully qualified domain name, what changes are required for DMARC and we'll talk briefly about SPF as well as having a quick look at reverse DNS. Hopefully all of that rings a bell. In the second video, we'll take a look at DKIM, which is a little bit more involved and requires a few more changes. So we've left that for a separate video. So um, let's now uh, get going. I'm not going to go over to my, um, to my Raspberry Pi uh, to start with. We're actually going to go over to my web browser. So I'm just going to get it open. Okay. So as a reminder, when you host multiple domains on the same server, which we are now doing, you need to make sure that your DNS settings for all of your domains are configured correctly and are pointing towards your router, i.e. your external IP address. This part of the process for each domain is critical. So to that end, I thought it would be a good idea to take a quick look through the DNS settings that I have for my email server so that you can check yours are set up correctly. So to show this, I have here my Cloudflare account and I'll go into my DNS settings so that you can see how it should look for my second domain, the one that I've borrowed called Utilize Me. Just to be 100% clear though, both my Utilize Me and single entity DNS settings are exactly the same aside from domain name changes where needed and a DKIM key change. They are, they are the only differences but I thought I'd show you in this case, my Utilize Me account instead of single entity, seeing as the whole point is to show a new domain. Okay, so let's walk through this. I'll just open my DNS settings here for my Utilize Me domain. There we go. So firstly, you should have a mail A record pointing to your external IP address, which of course must be a static IP address. This needs to be set as DNS only here and shouldn't be proxied. Then we need to have an A record for SMTP, which you can, you can see here, www, which you can see here, and your domain, which you can see here, in this case, utilize me. Okay, and these can be proxied because they can make use of the Cloudflare proxy capability. Next, we need an MX record, which you can see here, for your domain going to SMTP dot followed by your domain. So that's how that should be configured. Again, this is DNS only, but it will be automatically DNS only as it's an MX record. Okay, so those five are nice and straightforward and are the five essential elements of your DNS configuration. Without them set correctly, you won't be able to operate your email server for this domain. The next three are for the benefit of making our email server more secure and legitimate, 
and I've been through these extensively in this series, so I won't labour them too much here. But just take a look at what is on my screen to remind yourself of what needs to be set. The one I will labour a little is the default underscore domain key, this one. This is the entry for the DKIM key, and in the following video, as mentioned, we'll be generating another key for this field. So we'll be replacing the content, so literally the content field here, uh, in the next video after we've generated a new key. So lastly, let's just talk about DMARC, and there's a DMARC record here, the last bit one is the DMARC record. Let's have a quick look at what's inside. There we go. Uh, if you recall from the earlier videos, DMARC can be custom configured. So my example is just that, it's an example, but it should work for you if you choose to copy it. So just make sure if you do copy it to update the domain, which forms part of the content, you can see it here, and the username, the user must also exist, uh, to make sure that these do go to a real user account. Okay, so you get the emails that it gets sent through. Um, with that done, on your DMS server, as you can see here, uh, you're finished with the DMARC record, um, and indeed you've completed the DMARC configuration for your new domain. So we can tick that off as well. So we're making good progress already. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's take a quick look at where we're at here. Okay. So that's DMARC and DNS covered. Let's now head over to my desktop and check we are using a fully qualified domain name in the postfix settings, discuss our DNS, <clears throat> and talk briefly about SPF. Okay, so here we are on my desktop. I'm going to SSH into my Raspberry Pi as usual with my SSH alias Pi4. Okay. So as mentioned, let's firstly double check. We are using a fully qualified domain name in our postfix configuration file. This is required for servers to take our emails seriously. This should already be the case as you will have set this up previously as part of this series. But just to be sure, let's head into the main postfix configuration file and check. So type as I type, sudo to elevate permissions, nano as our text editor, slash etc slash postfix slash main dot cf which is the main configuration file for postfix okay i'm just going to go down a little bit there we go okay and i'm just going to move the cursor down to here so what we need to do is we need to check that my host name is equal to mail dot followed by your domain name the same domain, ideally, that our ISP has a PTR record for, and make sure that the SMTPD banner is pointing to my hostname, which we can see here. Okay. Now, <clears throat> we can see here that my SMTPD banner is indeed pointing to my hostname, which is good, and I can see that my hostname is equal to my primary domain, which is mail.single-entity.com which is what my PTR record is pointing to, which is required for reverse DNS lookup. So that's great. So make sure that in your case, the same thing is set and you'll be all good to go. Now, before I move on from our DNS and PTR records, I just want to labor this particular point. If you remember back to the RDNS video, you will have had to contacted your ISP to have a PTR record set up in order for RDNS to return correctly to get 100% on the email score testing service. So the domain which your PTR record is pointing to should be the same as your my hostname entry, irrespective of any other domains you may be hosting. In my case, utilize me, for example, which you'll see doesn't appear as my hostname. This means that your my hostname variable only needs to match one of your domains, even if you are hosting, say, 10 domains. Okay, so as we can see, for me, this is correct, and I've informed you that my host name is the same as my PTR record. So I can now exit the text editor and move on knowing this is correct. So now let's briefly talk about SPF. Now you will have had, <coughs> excuse me, 
you will have added your SPF record as a text entry to your DNS settings if you followed along at the start of this video and copied your DNS settings to be the same as mine. So that's fine, you've got your DNS record set up for FPS. You'll already have <coughs> installed the SPF postfix extension as well from earlier in the course, so that's on, installed on your system. So you're all set there as well. And you'll also have set up your postfix configuration file to make use of SPF. So there's no changes required there either. So basically, SPF is all covered. I wanted to mention this despite there being no changes required for SPF, however, in case any eagle-eyed viewers felt I'd missed out SPF as part of this configuration check. SPF is actually all set if you followed the course up to this point, and there are no changes needed for additional domains. Okay, great. So that's it for this video. I'm just going to bring up uh, my slide here. So this is where we're at. We've confirmed the DNS settings are as required for a new domain, all except a change to the key in the DKIM text entry, which is required, but we'll be doing that in the next video. As part of looking at the DNS settings, we've updated the DMARC record to our new domain, so that's done. We've checked that we are using a fully qualified domain name in our postfix configuration and that it is the same as our PTR record hosted on our ISP for a successful RDNS lookup. We've discussed how the RDNS lookup requires the PTR record still and that it should match your primary domain as configured in your postfix configuration file. And lastly, we had a quick check of SPF and found that no changes are needed for new domains. So in the next video, we'll be looking at DKIM and generating a new key for our domain. So well done, we're over halfway there and very near the end of the whole series. If you found this useful, uh, please do like the video before you head off uh, and please do subscribe to my course if you haven't already. It's the best way of showing appreciation, I'd really appreciate it. Also, if you'd like direct support or would like to support me, or if you'd like to see videos as much as two months early, please do visit my Patreon account. Thanks very much then, and I'll see you in the next and final configuration video.